Hello, my name is Jocelyn Sproat and I am here with Lo. I am here with the Girl Scouts working on my Silver Award. And today I'm just going to tell you about what Dwell does and ways you can help or support us. So why Dwell? Every child needs to know that somebody loves these children. And when being foster adopted, it can be really beautiful, but it can be brutal. Uh, maybe these kids won't talk to you or they get into fights and this just comes down hard on the parents. Um, so what Dwell's here to do is help the family stay committed and yeah. In Deuteronomy 10.18, it says, He admires justice for the fatherless and the widow, and he loves the stranger giving them food and clothing. This means that God loves these people, so we shouldn't show any ignorance to them and start to help out with these families as well. So Jennifer Likes, she's the founder and exclusive director. Uh, she has one adopted son. She was a foster and adoptive counselor. And what would happen was she would bring this child into a new family, and after couple months it would get hard and then the child would be out of the family. So, so she got sick at seeing that so she made her own um, organization that um, supports these parents and helps out uh, just to keep the kids around so it's less hard on the kids. So they created a video, Dwell did, and it's going to explain some things that I already went over and it'll probably clear some things up. And then it's going to talk about some things I'm going to get to um, real soon. So just sit back in the video and relax. Adoption's always been part of um, our family, her, my husband, and I. Uh, we have one son who is adopted. We have two children who um, are biological children. So about 16 years ago now, we entered into the process of adoption. We felt called to it. Eventually, I started working for a foster care and adoption agency as a family caseworker. And so I was responsible for uh, recruiting foster families, training them, um, writing home studies. I was finding that families just were not as supported and prepared as maybe they needed and wanted to be. And it's not because agencies aren't doing their job or caseworkers aren't doing their job or don't care deeply about uh, the families. Um, it's more a matter of, I think, this, um, what I was finding was a lack of community support. Um, and it's not that people don't care, it's that they don't know. But I felt God really just calling me to do something different and that he wasn't he wasn't done with me yet in this um, in this area of, of foster care and adoption and caring for vulnerable kids um, and so through lots of um, lots of time and prayer and essentially entrusting people with this dream that I was having um, and this calling that I felt uh, people started believing in it with me and we officially launched in January of 2019. We provide care packages for foster and adoptive families when they receive uh, replacement, um, and, we, and we learned about it. Uh, so I've had the privilege of building relationships with our local agencies. And when they get a new placement, um, they let me know. And then uh, we can put together a care package, care group. We just launched that this March. And, um, you know, and so that was just eight months ago. And we've had 22 moms come to care group. Um, and of those 22 moms, they are caring for um, about 56 foster children or adopted children. We have a goal to do one for dads in the new year to adoption scholarship. So that is a program that's for families that are adopting through domestic placement or international adoption. Uh, we do advocacy events um, as well as trauma-informed trainings as well. That that will open in the new year too. We'll start some classes on that. I'm trained in a specific um, 
model called CBRI, which is Trust-Based Relational Intervention. But it's a trauma-informed therapeutic approach to helping and working with kids that are coming from hard places. So we have some, we have a few big initiatives coming for 2020. One of those things is uh, we have a goal to open uh, a foster closet we will call the Hope Chest. And that will be a resource room for foster and adoptive parents, uh, maybe foster families that get emergency placements. And um, often placements happen very like in an emergency situation. And so uh, a lot of times these kiddos are coming with very little, um, sometimes just the clothes on their back. So this room, this space will be stocked with uh, new and gently used clothing uh, that families can come and, and it'll be a quiet There'll be sort of a calming corner for kids if they want to come along, um, a place to try stuff on, um, a place to be loved on. If I didn't have people coming alongside me saying, I want to be a part of this, how can I help? The world would not exist. So I'm proud of, especially I'm proud of people just um, kind of stepping up and being a part of, of the answer part of the call. So it's one thing for somebody to kind of have an idea or calling and to act on it. But it's another thing for people to say, I see you and, um, and thanks for what you're doing. And I have this gift to offer um, and I want to be a part of what you're doing. I'm so grateful and it's so fun. <laughs> it is so fun to have other people getting involved that have resources or connections or whatever it is um, that they can offer because that translates into lives change. Like that translates into families being cared for well, which translates into these children being cared for well. When we feel loved and nurtured and cared for, we have greater capacity to love and nurture and care for those around us and in our home. Families feel like they have the necessary resources to handle all of the stresses that come along with it. And so they don't put in their 30-day notice. Or they don't act to dissolve an adoption. So things happen. And when that happens, then we have to find another new home for that child. Every time a child has to leave, is compounded trauma. So if we can reduce that and we can care well for these families and we can give them necessary resources and equip them so they feel equipped to handle the unique stresses that come along with fostering and adopting. As well gives support to those people that take that deep of faith to, uh, to be a foster parent, to be an adoptive parent, to knowing that there are these people there to help. They're helping other people realize that there's different ways to support and I think just educating others is, is huge. We've also provided a, a bridge to the community, really. Um, it's been amazing every time Jen needs something, how it's filled to full. You know, I think the community's wanted to be a part of the foster and the adoption system, but hasn't known how. Um, and it's really opened up the door for people to be involved, and I think how it's blossomed you know, in, in its short time, it's been in existence. It's a, it's a testament to Jen Lake, but it's also a testament to the, the community really wanting to support this. Everybody has a role to play in this. Everyone can be something. So what's your something? And I, I, one of my greatest pleasures as well is helping people discover what their something is because they belong here. They belong, you know, involved in caring for orphans and vulnerable children. Scripture is really clear about that. And so... I don't think we need to pray about, am I called to do this, but how?
the work dwell does. So dwell supports foster and adoptive families, and they do this with different types of support groups. They hand out care packages. Um, they offer a hope chest clothing closet. Um, they offer trauma informed trainings, and they offer match adoption scholarships. So parent care groups is a group where parents can meet up and talk about things that are going on, and it's just like a support group for these people. Um, where to find us? You can find us in Williamsport, PA. Um, you can also look on their webpage for this information or on their Facebook account. Um, if you're looking for links to these, I'm going to hand out a paper with links to these types of things as well. Um, ways to get involved. So this is a big part of my project and I highly encourage you to help out. So some ways you can serve are collect items for care packages, um, collect new or gently used clothing for the hope chest. Um, you can offer a financial gift for adoption scholarship. Um, for the care packages, you could go on Dwell's Amazon wish list and find some things there and send it there. Or you can volunteer. So the care packages, as I said, these are really important. So these are like um, just little ways for the family to get to know each other. It helps them connect. So like playing a board game, that's one I really like to talk about because playing a board game is nice for these families. You know, you get to laugh around, um, have fun and show support. Even putting on nail polish, it just shows like, hey, I'm here for you. I got your back. Um, you, if you do want to help out, which I really, really, really want you to, um, Dwell has an Amazon wish list, and if you want to find that, that's actually going to be on the one of the links on one of the papers. Um, you could just, it will say on the paper like an address to send it to as well. So just go check out Amazon wish list for Dwell, and yeah. So the hope chest. The hope chest is um, very, very new. So we're needing lots of new items. Um, this includes new underwear, new socks, or very, very gently used clothing or new clothing. So yeah, I highly encourage you for that. So thank you for letting me come out here and talk. Um, in James 1, it says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. This means that pure religion is loving on adoptive or foster kids and widows because of their struggles. So not everybody's called to foster and adopt, but we can offer support. And one of the ways I would also like you to do is um, get a jar out, any type, and just any spare change at the end of the day or any money basically put it in the jar and at the end of the month donate it to dwell because a lot of things were canceled um for the spring stuff they were going to have a lot of fundraisers for these types of things and they just got canceled due to quarantine so if you could please just donate that would be awesome and if you do do that um just go on the web page and you can donate that amount of money through there so have a nice day, guys, and thank you for letting me speak to you.